1983 turbo uh, diesel 300 uh, T no it's not the TD it's just a D not turbo diesel yeah 300 D 1983 oh yeah it is the turbo diesel and it has 156,000 miles on it and this is one of those clean ones so 156,000 clean really clean body really nice just had some leaks so the mechanic at this business this is a business uh, spray foam business and the owner wanted one of these because his ha supposedly his wife had one many 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 years ago and now they're they could afford to fix one and get one and they found a clean one um, so the mechanic that works for them is fixing all the leaks and I know it had zero PSI, it was sitting for years, it had no refrigerant in the system whatsoever. So I already know off the bat that all the rubber hoses have basically become like sponges and they bleed through refrigerant as they get older. This is normal. This is a normal leak. When they were made from day one, every car leaks refrigerant the day it rolled off the factory floor. They were made like that. That was intentional because they can't put stainless steel lines, silver braised, no seals, no, no rubber gaskets on a car because things have to flex. Especially the engine moves from the engine to the firewall, you have to have a piece of flex. So since it had zero right off the bat, I threw some nitrogen into it really fast to look for a gross pissing out leak, nothing. So I threw it on the vacuum pump and it easily got down to 300 microns and uh, I'm gonna put R134 in this system because I know I'm going to find leaks it's going to leak now or soon after uh, this is the original compressor this is the old uh, axial Ford compressor down there and as you can see right there that's an o-ring that o-ring was flipped over put inside that flip over bend over piece right there that holds the case to the housing and that was installed when it came off the assembly line so that is the original compressor and so those compressors notoriously leak when they get old the rubber o-ring that goes all the way around the case all the way around becomes hard and brittle and the case actually moves and pulses with every swish of the piston every time the piston comes up and makes high compression and compress the case moves well what happens is that case to the housing opens and there's supposed to be a rubber o-ring that'll flex and give with that case well it might not leak now when I charge it up but most likely when they go out on a hot day and the high side head pressure goes up it will leak that I know and just like diesel lines these metal lines they actually flex they expand and contract with every pulsation of the injector. They build up pressure, the line expands. The injector opens, the line falls. You can, it is actually a RPM monitoring device where you can actually clamp it onto the injector and it measures the flex of the line and actually tells you when the injector opens and you can actually have the RPMs of the injectors firing that way. Um, what else? So I know that's gonna happen. Uh, I need to bring up the head pressure because I want to see if the pressure switch works. If it works, it'll go to the, it'll engage the relay. The relay works, then the engage, relay will engage the fan. So we want to see if the circuit works. Uh, what else? So of course, you can see I have two vacuum pumps on there. And uh, I think I told you I bled it through three times with nitrogen because this is a 1983 vehicle with the original compressor on it. And it's been sitting for years and here we have 300 microns at this point where the vacuum is over here then now that i'm going to explain why you do not want a micron meter set up at your vacuum pumps look at here it shows basically less than one seven tenths of a micron at this point because the micron meter is located right here I'm going through a hose and on that one I have the Schrader core still inside the valve and so this is a completely false reading it tells you something but you would never use a micron gauge in a vacuum pump or attached to a vacuum pump as your measurement 
Now watch here, I'm gonna turn off this source of vacuum. So this is going right there. Let's turn it off. And now you could see a raise. Even though I have this vacuum on over here, it is still rising. Cause there's, there's a bit of moisture in this system. And it'll keep rising and it levels out at around 14 to 1700 microns and it starts slowing down to the point where you get to the point and the tents and then just the tents start clicking off really, really slow of a micron. Something you could never, ever read with a set of micron uh, analog gauges. All right. And here it just traced it out. You could see where I closed off the vacuum and you could see there the vacuum started going above 500 microns. I have a target maximum decay of 500 microns right there. Let's see if I can zero that in right there and an evacuation target of 200. But I'm not gonna re reach that on this one. This is definitely a moisture contaminated system. It's not really bad because it's mineral oil. It wasn't POE oil or PAG oil. I'm just filling this up so they can drive it for more diagnosis looking for leaks because I know it's going to leak. Oh, oh, getting into leaks and uh, compressors. So I was at a shop yesterday uh, talking to someone, oh, I'm, I'm learning, I do AC. And he's a mechanic, he's a body shop man, kind of doing mechanical. Uh, he does AC, and so we started talking. He didn't know much about vacuum. He just learned about using the tags on the car to fill up and not squirting the cans on. He just learned that. And so we we're talking about all, he was asking me procedures he's never heard of before. He's had zero schooling. He just watched somebody who watched somebody who learned from somebody. And so then I brought up the case to go, yeah, and another mechanic was there, one of his friends, and we we're going, yeah, well, you know, all those times when it comes in working, kind of, but it's just not cooling out the dash, and you're putting it, and you burn up the compressor, and then you get to charge them for the compressor and make more money on the condenser and compressor and all that, and then he laughs, and he goes, oh, yeah, 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 but yeah, don't tell nobody about that, and the other guy goes, yeah, that's one way of making money. It always makes us money when they come in and they don't know what's wrong with it. And if we burn it up, they don't know. So we just charge them for it. Oh boy, you could see where this is going. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves, but I just kept joking along with them. And we started talking about mess ups and, uh, and how, how they explain to the customer when they break something, what was wrong to charge them for something that they broke. And that was my topic in my discussion, joking along with them, playing along. And you know what? This is more common than not. Let's just put it that way. It is really common. And he I asked him about education and going to, you know, how about going to one of the city colleges or uh, Skyline College or something? Yeah, I heard about that. I I'm, I'm thinking about it. So yet he'll break a lot of parts and charge customers for it, but won't invest in education or the proper tools. Never heard about a refrigerant analyzer, doesn't know about contaminated refrigerants, doesn't know about air and refrigerant. I showed him my, he watched me use my analyzer and ask what it is. He's been in this business for almost 20 years and he's just at this level right now. And you would not believe how many technicians are in this business learning by breaking things instead of learning by reading. And, uh, and, and I told him, I go, oh, there's good books. And I told him about Max. And I told him, yeah, there's books available in your language because English isn't his first language. But that's no excuse because every bit of reading material in every country is available in every country. There's air conditioning manufacturers around the world who make the parts, the training. Denso, Denso is around the world. All their literature and their training classes are in every country of this world. So there's no excuse for not going out of your way and not learning. But for the general customer who just came, who's not a technician and listening to me right now, unfortunately, the truth is, you there's Bobby Beavis butt crack mofo who goes around and sticks shop air in the cars looking for leaks and saying that's okay because he doesn't see a problem. You don't see the moisture build up in the oil. It's not something you see. He goes, yeah, but they work when they leave. Yes, but what about the problem created by uh, what problem? And that tells you another level of the technician. He doesn't even know a problem exists when you have excessive moisture and it doesn't, it's not something you always see instantly right now. It's the damage it causes later. And that's why spreading out the information, trying to gear everybody I can towards Max to learn a little bit more, M-A-S-C-S, M-M, 
M-A-C-S, Max, org, um, to learn more. And um, yeah, that's a bit, of, I gotta cut this one out because I'm about to eat up the memory on this uh, foam. I might make a video of this one more time after I charge up the refrigerant. And let's see if this case busts out once I pump it up and get it working. Once it gets hot and that case gets hot and the high compression comes up, let's see if that case bursts out and starts leaking. All right, see you guys. And let me zero in there. Let me see if, make sure. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. And get down there. Because I really want to make sure you know, for you guys who are not familiar, you see that little round ring right there? That's a rubber O-ring. That means it's the original compressor off the assembly line. All right, see you guys later.